uh, yeah, so let's talk about the behavior then. <laughs> That's better. Uh, uh, yeah. So there, so there are different in, uh, cannabinoids have quite a few effects. So um, the the main effects people and and I stay away at the moment from what might be therapeutically um, relevant for cannabis consumption. The main ones people talk about when you just think back in the days about the recreational use, people might experience a high if the if the dose is is um, sufficient enough. Um, people might depend on the dose, and that's where where it starts already to be quite complex. If you have um, used a high dose THC cannabis strain, for example, you would you might experience increased anxiety. If you use low dose um, THC cannabis strains, you might have a reduction in anxiety. If you have um, abused cannabis for a long time, it might actually impact on your ability to uh, perform well in cognitive tests. So it might impair to a degree your learning and memory. Um, however, nowadays cannabinoids are also looked at in regards to improving cognition in Alzheimer's. So again, it depends very much on what strain of cannabis you might be abusing or you might have access to. Cannabinoids can reduce um, body temperature. If you use very high dose um, THC, it reduces, so we call it a sedative-like effect. So um, it would inhibit your your interest to move around. So as um, you alerted to, I do preclinical research. So we, if we use high dose THC in rodents, they, for example, don't move as much anymore, so they are slightly sedated. Um, but then coming into the therapeutic arena, cannabinoids have been shown, for example, to have anticonvulsant effects. So that's why they at the moment looked at or have, to a degree at least, already been established as an effective treatment for epilepsy or certain types of epilepsy. Um, it can also have effects on your social abilities. So if, again, if you use high dose or high, uh, THC um, and rich strains, it might, might reduce your drive to socially interact with other people and might actually result in something which is called social withdrawal, uh, which is relevant for schizophrenia. That's why cannabis abuse, at least at certain times of your development, is seen as a risk factor for developing schizophrenia. So these are some of the behavioral effects people are aware of when they talk about cannabis use. So you have the high, it has an impact on anxiety, but it really depends on the dose. It can have an impact on your cognitive abilities. Um, it can be sedative, again, all dose dependent, but it also might have some benef beneficial effects, including being an anticonvulsant. Um, did I hear you correctly in saying that um, while typically the idea is that uh, cannabis will reduce cognitive um, functioning or impact cognitive functioning in a negative way, that for Alzheimer's um, patients it might improve um, cognitive? Or did I hear, you, miss, hear what you said? No, that, that is correct. And that's where the, where the, complexity, that, that's where the complexity comes in. Um, and it really also depends a little bit on who you would talk to. So... As I said, I'm not a cannabinoid researcher per se. I use preclinical research models to understand risk factors of uh, certain brain disorders and to also look at potential therapeutics. So when I go to cannabis focus or cannabinoid research focus conferences, a lot of times the focus is on some of the positive effects of cannabinoids. And that can include that and I'm not talking about THC here, that is very important. I talk about cannabidiol, CBD, my own research, but that's followed up by others, and, and others have done this now also, to a degree at least in clinical trials. When you look at cannabidiol, CBD, CBD in a mouse model for Alzheimer's, where you know that mice over a period of time develop cognitive deficits. If you treat these animals with CBD, they do better in cognitive tasks after they have received this treatment over a period of time. So in that regard, it improves the, the cognition of these animals, or to be more accurate, it reduces the cognitive decline of these animals. 
However, if I use a mouse model, which isn't affected by Alzheimer's, so they are normal, healthy mice, and you would expose them chronically, so over a period of time, to a high dose THC, so delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, and you test the animals at the end for their cognitive performance. So how good can they learn? How good can they memorize? These animals depend on the dose, depending on how long you have um, exposed them to THC for. These animals might show actually reduced cognitive abilities. So they will take longer to learn. They might not memorize as much to learn. And then to make it even more complex, there's one study from Germany, which was published, I think, five or six years ago, where they tested in aging mice. So the animals were not Alzheimer's mice or had a genetic modification, which would make them close to an Alzheimer's-related model system. But so these animals were just aging mice. They were around two years old. And they exposed them to low-dose THC. And at the low dose, at this advanced age, it actually reduced the, the aging-related cognitive decline of these animals. So depending on who you ask and depending on what they are talking about, people will tell you cannabinoids in, potentially have a, the ability to improve cognition, but in all likelihood that's not linked to the effects of THC. If people talk about that cannabinoids or cannabis impairs your cognitive effects or your cognitive abilities and all like you talk about high dose thc so it really depends on who you are talking to and what type of studies and what type of cannabis exposure they're referring to it gets even more complex so if you use if you look at these animals which have initially been treated with high dose thc at a young age and then you test them there for their cognitive behaviors, and they do worse because they had high-dose THC for an extended period of time. If you test them, let's say, two months later again, but they don't have any THC exposure during this time, they might, every, might actually have come back to the normal levels of animals which never had seen cannabis in their life. So it's not necessarily a chronic effect on the cognition, but it's a relatively short-term effect that if you if you abuse cannabis or if you have recently abused cannabis, talking about the mice here, that these animals then show an impairment in, in cognition. So yes, it's basically dependent on what cannabinoid you are talking to you about, what, what um, dose you are referring to. You can argue both. You could argue it actually improves cognition or it might be actually detrimental for your cognitive performance. And this is why you find all sorts of media announcements regarding what cannabis is doing because people quite often don't consider that it is a complex plant, that people, when they use it recreationally, in all likelihood, it's, for example, very high in THC because that gives you a high, but that might have a detrimental effect on your cognition, whereas when people talk about cannabis potentially being used as an Alzheimer's treatment, they normally talk about cannabis, which is very low in THC, but very high in CBD. But if you buy cannabis on the recreational market or the illegal market, it's in all likelihood high in THC and low in CBD. So it's really dependent on what, what you are talking about and what you're looking at in, in, in particular. Oh, that was really good. I think... I think that part needs to be clipped out and played again and again. Like you need to remember this the difference between <laughs> THC and CBD. And when people are talking about these things in research, you need, they're very specific about it, but the media doesn't. And, uh, and then can cause issues in terms of <laughs> result interpretation. Yeah, I can give you one example. The first study we published on Alzheimer's disease, transgenic mice, or animals which are genetically modified, that they de develop a, a kind of behavior and a kind of brain um, pathology which is relevant to Alzheimer's. The a animals not have really Alzheimer's disease, but they have certain aspects of Alzheimer's disease, and therefore we can test them. We expose them to purified cannabidiol, CBD. So now cannabis, there was no THC involved. It was a purified compound just cannabidiol. We published that in a medical journal 
and just stated that if you expose animals to purified CBD, they do better in behavioral tests afterwards, which tests for learning and memory. The first news outlet which covered the story said cannabis is treating Alzheimer's disease, which was very far removed from what we actually had done. We hadn't used cannabis. We hadn't even used THC. We hadn't used any of the other 100 cannabinoids. But obviously, it was a way better story to say cannabis treats Alzheimer's disease. And after that, I got lots of people who wrote to me and said, listen, so can I get somewhere? And that was before cannabis became, or medicinal cannabis became legal or at least accessible to people in Australia. I had lots of people who asked me if they now can use the um, recreationally use cannabis to help their relatives who are affected by Alzheimer's. And, and I had to explain that what we had done is very, very different to an approach where you use some sort of cannabis strain, you don't know the cannabinoid content and, the, and the, the mix of cannabinoids in this plant, and this, just think then that this might be a, a therapeutically effective way to help um, relatives or, or your family members. Um, but yeah, media obviously picks up on whatever sells the best story.